If the group gets going and really starts to become productive, there's lots of information, there's lots of data and evidence that starts to get gathered, but this can really become cluttered and too much. How can we kind of cut through the clutter and stay on the right track, Kelly? Well, this is really natural, Ben, because especially if you're working to capture all of the ideas, it's important for the facilitator to organize those ideas, but also at the same time, keep it manageable. So a key role for the facilitator then is to make sure that in gathering all those ideas, they're still focused on that clear purpose. So there are some strategies, strategies that we can use as facilitators to keep this thing clear and coherent? Yes, there are, Ben, and it's the strategies that you know, used to organize the data and make sure that the evidence is clear and still focused on that group's initial purpose. The facilitator needs to be aware of two things that can commonly happen. One, group members bring an excess amount of information. This could be student work, teacher resources, or other learning supports. The other thing that can happen is a lack of information. Participants may not be sure of what is missing if the information isn't coherent or organized somehow. Sometimes the facilitator may lead this process or even better, enable others to take leadership in this area. The most important thing at this stage though is making sure that we're productive and meeting the goals of the group. One strategy to organize information is to sort and chunk the ideas together. This could be done as a group by spreading out the information that's available and asking everyone, what goes together here? The goal is to begin to find categories of information. Random chunks of information are helpful. However, how these categories relate is really important. By organizing and sequencing, the connections between the categories may become more apparent. Now that we've chunked, categorized, organized, and sequenced the information, it's important to capture a record of what we've done. This can be done by taking notes on chart paper, a whiteboard, or a computer. Hard copies, photos, or digital files of these notes can be kept to preserve the thinking of the group. Ben talked about how a facilitator can help capture and archive ideas from sources outside the group. Eventually, we need the group to bring back evidence based on their group's action plan. The whole idea here for the facilitator is to keep the group focused on their purpose. The data and evidence that is emerging from the group's work together can help achieve this focus. To ensure that the group is accountable with each other, each group member is in charge of bringing back evidence to the table. Everyone has a part to play in deciding what will be brought back, as well as what might be missing. The facilitator can ask questions that will help uncover what the group will agree to bring and also what currently might be lacking. There are some clarifying prompts that can be used to maintain the group's ownership of the data and evidence. Remember, the facilitator's role is to keep the group focused on their purpose. You can do this by using such prompts as, I'm noticing that, or let's stop for a moment and look at this, or do we all understand what's being said here? So Kelly, when can keeping focus become a real challenge? Well, Ben, I remember working with groups that maybe had a larger number of people, and that's where keeping focused became the work. But that can be hard. Is it possible to maintain focus and keep everyone happy? Well, it's not really about keeping everybody happy, Ben, because that's a challenge. It's about keeping the group focused on what they were working on. And you're always going to have opposing viewpoints in a group, but it's important for the facilitator to always rein it back to what the group was maintaining as their focus from the beginning. <music>